March 21st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 12 from the New Testament. Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom he had raised from the dead. So they prepared a dinner for Jesus there. Martha was serving, and Lazarus was among those present at the table with him. Then Mary took three quarters of a pound of expensive aromatic oil from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus. She then wiped his feet dry with her hair. Now the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfumed oil. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was going to betray him, said, Why wasn't this oil sold for three hundred silver coins and the money given to the poor? Now Judas said this not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. As keeper of the money box, he used to steal what was put into it. So Jesus said, Leave her alone, she has kept it for the day of my burial. For you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. Now a large crowd of Judeans learned that Jesus was there, and so they came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to kill Lazarus too, for on account of him many of the Jewish people from Jerusalem were going away and believing in Jesus. The next day the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. They began to shout, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Do not be afraid, people of Zion. Look, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things when they first happened, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that these things had happened to him. So the crowd who had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead were continuing to testify about it. Because they had heard that Jesus had performed this miraculous sign, the crowd went out to meet him. Thus the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you can do nothing. Look, the world has run off after him. Now some Greeks were among those who had gone up to worship at the feast. So they approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and requested, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and they both went and told Jesus. Jesus replied, The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the solemn truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. The one who loves his life destroys it, and the one who hates his life in this world guards it for eternal life. If anyone wants to serve me, he must follow me, and where I am, my servant will be too. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now my soul is greatly distressed, and what should I say? Father, deliver me from this hour? No, but for this very reason I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard the voice said that it had thundered. Others said that an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice has not come for my benefit, but for yours. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Now he said this to indicate clearly what kind of death he was going to die. Then the crowd responded, We have heard from the law that the Christ will remain forever. How can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus replied, The light is with you for a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light. When Jesus said these things, he went away and hid himself from them. Although Jesus had performed so many miraculous signs before them, they still refused to believe in him, so that the word of Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled. 
He said, Lord, who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For this reason they could not believe, because again Isaiah said, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, so that they would not see with their eyes, and understand with their heart, and turn to me, and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw Christ's glory and spoke about him. Nevertheless, even among the rulers many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees they would not confess Jesus to be the Christ, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue, for they love praise from men more than praise from God. But Jesus shouted out, The one who believes in me does not believe in me, but in the one who sent me. And the one who sees me sees the one who sent me. I have come as a light into the world so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not obey them, I do not judge him. For I have not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not accept my words has a judge. The word I have spoken will judge him at the last day. For I have not spoken from my own authority, but the Father himself who sent me has commanded me what I should say and what I should speak, and I know that his commandment is eternal life. Thus the things I say, I say just as the Father has told me. God, it's so amazing that I get to read your words right now as we're about in the next couple of weeks to head into Easter time and the Holy Week and Good Friday and Palm Sunday and it's just amazing the timing that's happened and I remember as a little kid and kind of wondering why we don't do it anymore that on Palm Sunday they gave all the kids the little palm fan things to reenact what that looked like and, and we would shout out Hosanna 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 in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord just like from verse 13 and I remember getting so excited about that as a as a child and you know they would have somebody who would write in uh, on a donkey sometimes sometimes kind of faking that out um, and I just remember it being like a huge celebration it was just such an awesome Sunday just like Easter was but I think what we overlook so often is those same people, us, the same people who are shouting your son's praises, Hosanna in the highest, were the same people who later on sent him to his death, who called for him to be murdered. And we do that every day in our own life where where one day we're shouting your praises and thanks to you and thanks to all the blessings you gave us and blessings in our world usually mean because things are going the way we want them to. And then I swear the, the next moment when things aren't going the way we want them to, when things start going bad, instead of realizing that that's a time to also be joyful, that that's a time where you are going to grow us and maybe uh, disciple us or discipline us then we turn on you and we're angry with you or upset at you or we walk away from you for a while I, I don't know why we do that I mean I do it's our own arrogance and our own ego and it's our fear of men over fear of you definitely but I mean, really, I don't understand why we do that. We have this amazing father who loves us more than we can ever imagine. Who we should every day be shouting. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Every day should just be worship to you. And yet we get sidetracked with what we want and fear of people and things of this world. Today, God, I, I pray that today is a celebration, that today is just like Palm Sunday, that today is just like Easter, where I raise my hands and joyfully thank you and praise you and humbly set all of what I think I want in front of you and allow you to take over in my life. I want for the rest of my life to be shouting Hosanna, 
I never want to be the people who then turn on you and murder your son. God, there is so much to celebrate in this life. And I now know that even when I'm going through hard times, perhaps not my first reaction, but usually one of my first reactions is to stop and thank you. Because I know that even though what I'm going through is going to be hard and it's not exactly the choice I would have made, it's the choice that you made, which is way more important. And I know that you have a plan and I know um, amazingly with all the things you have to do that you're paying attention to my world and how can I glorify you. And I also know if I'm going through something hard and you're there with me, that with you all things are possible. All, not some, but all. God, I love you very much. In your son's name we pray and shout blessings. Amen.